that as we now see Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion about to enter the ring, that Cesar Brion's stand-up style is made to order for a fellow like Joe Lewis. Though Joe has slowed up considerably, as we all know, he still packs the same old TNT in both hands that accounted for 52 knockouts in 62 bouts. And as the all-world heavyweight champion himself, Joe Lewis, in the ring now, attended by Larry Amity, George Nicholson, and Manny Seaman. And in the other corner, Cesar Silverio Brion of Cordoba of the Argentine. Now maybe we'll have a chance to talk about the Pabst Blue Ribbon event of the evening, which fits Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion. So we'll have to wait for just a few moments while the boys have the gloves placed upon them on their hands, inspected by the state inspectors and also attended by the opposing seconds who visit the opposing corners. I did say earlier that, and I think I'm right, the bout is of tremendous importance to both men. I guess everyone knows it's do or die for Joe Lewis because he wants to go on to a bout in Detroit and then later on into a return match with Ezra Charles. Having felt, as he puts it, that his bout with Ezra Charles found him not prepared, he is very anxious tonight to overcome the hurdle of Cesar Brion, who has lost only three fights in 34 and has reversed decisions in two of those fights, the only man still holding a decision over him being Roland Lastaza. As you know, in his professional career, Joe Lewis has lost two bouts, his knockout at the hands of Max Schmeling, and his defeat last September by Ezra Charles. Brion has a very good record. As an amateur, he won 102 out of 104. As a pro, 31 out of 34. He developed a punch after he had turned professional. As an amateur, he had only 15 knockouts. Lewis has won 60 of his 62 bouts. And it was 14 years between his first defeat by Max Schmeling and the outpointing by Ezra Charles. So tonight, everyone around the ringside, including the galaxy of sports writers and celebrities, Wonder whether or not Brion has the punch to be able to put Joe Lewis away, and Joe Lewis says he's going to get to Brion early. Brion has a punch which is similar to uh, Kid Gavilon's bolo punch. It isn't quite as obvious as Gavilon's, but it catches an opponent as he moves in, and it could bother Lewis since he's not as fast as he used to be. Newspaper men from all over the world are here tonight, but here again, Pat Rush. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials are assigned by the State Athletic Commission of Illinois. The examining physician, Dr. J. M. Houston. The timers, Frank Young at the bell, Mike Murphy counting for the knockdown. The judges, Ed Hentz and Ed Klein. The referee, Frank Gilmer. You never can tell what Pat is going to do, so I'd rather have him in the ring making announcements, but he walks away. So I guess we've told you in fits and starts exactly what the impression is here tonight, as Paps is mighty happy to bring you another great Wednesday evening boxing bout. Another Blue Ribbon event with the former world heavyweight champion, Joe Lewis, and the Argentine heavyweight champion, Cesar Brion. And uh, all that could be told about this fight is youth and old age. The main event of the evening, 10 rounds in this corner from Argentina, wearing black and white trunks, weighing 196 pounds, is the Argentine heavyweight champion, Cesar Brion. In this corner, from Detroit, Michigan, wearing purple and blue trunks, weighing 216 pounds, is one of the greatest former heavyweight champions in the world, Joe Lewis. Boys, you're fighting under the rules of the Illinois State Athletic Commission. Keep punching until I tell you to break. 
And when I say break, stop punching and step back before you resume fighting. In case of a clean knockdown, the boy that's knocked down must take an eight count. If he's knocked out of the ring, he must take an 18 count. If you score the knockdown, go to the farthest corner and stay there till I wave you in to fight again. Make it a good, clean fight. Shake hands now and come out fighting. Round number one of the 10 rounder, bringing Joe Lewis back for that big question mark about to take place here at Chicago Stadium. Happily presented by the makers of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer. There's the buzzer announcing the warning for the bell of the first round, the referee, Frankie Gilmer. Joe Lewis, Cesar Brion. I'd like to explain earlier, you're going to hear a lot of noise around ringside tonight as the boys dictate their stories to the press telegraphers. Joe Lewis has a weight advantage of 20 pounds. They're both approximately the same height. Breon is 10 years younger than Joe. Two minutes to go of the first round of a 10 rounder. Cesar Breon with the black trunks with the white stripe. Joe Lewis with the trunks that look kind of goldish I guess on your screens. One minute to go of the first round. Joe is sporting a growth of beard and a slight mustache. He has a deadly serious look as he always has, but tonight it seems more so. Half a minute to go of the first round. There's the end of the first round. The crowd loved it. Both boys carrying the fight to each other. And there was great talk around that another of Joe Lewis's opponents might lose the fight in the dressing room. But the way Cesar Brion came out, traded punches with Joe Lewis, indicates that we're going to see a very good bout tonight. Depending, of course, upon what may occur as far as Joe Lewis's legs are concerned as they carry him through the later rounds. There's the warning buzzer for... The bell which will announce the second round, the 10 round bout here at the Chicago Stadium between Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion.
Two minutes to go of the second round in this 10 rounder. They're right over our Pabst Blue Ribbon microphone now. Joe promised tonight he'd throw plenty of right hands. One minute to go of the second round. Rayon has a mouse under his right eye. That mouse is hit again. It will bleed. That mouse looks more like a, a lace cut. Half a minute to go of the second round. Joe has now drawn the blood from Breon's nose. There's the end of the second round of this 10 rounder. And Joe certainly went after Cesar Brion. Looking in Brion's corner, the Paps Blue Ribbon events coming up. Brian is bleeding again from the nose. It hampers his work too, his breathing particularly, and it shows in the nervous strain. His eyes blink a bit with it. Brian has changed his style, as you notice. He's now going after the midsection of Joe Lewis. Two minutes to go of the third round, and Breon is still punching to the midsection, but is warned to pull them up because he hit an evident low blow. It's Joe's left that's doing the damage, and Breon can't get away from it. Either the jab or the hook. A minute to go of the third round. Breon is fighting back again. Comments from the ringside, especially from the many New York sports writers directly behind me, are something to hear. We'll pass them on later. Less than a half a minute to go of the third round.
There's the end of round number three for round number four now coming up. Say, Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer and the International Boxing Club are happy tonight to be host to several hundred servicemen, 500 to be exact, men from the regular Army, the Navy, and the Illinois National Guard who are here to see Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion in their 10-round battle at the Chicago Stadium. Round number four. Another low blow, a left thrown by Cesar Brion, warned by the official, Frank Gilmer. Two minutes to go around number four. Brianna is still bleeding from that nose round after round. It's opened up. Minutes ago, the fourth round. It was in the fourth round in the Ezra Charles fight that Lewis began to, well, let us say, tire a bit perceptibly. So we're watching the fourth round very carefully here. Less than a half a minute to go of the fourth round. There's the bell ending the fourth round here of the 10 round bout at the Chicago Bulls Stadium in which we see Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion. Among the New York contingent who are here directly behind our location for making comment on this television program are Lester Bromberg, Al Buck, Jim Dawson, Jess Abramson, Jim Jennings, Gene Ward, and Jimmy Cannon who has just returned from Korea. And they are dictating stories and since I don't always talk through the rounds, I'm able to hear their comments in their dictated stories to get some impression as to their feelings regarding the fight. And they feel that for the first three rounds in stalking Cesar Brion, Joe Lewis looked excellent, and then slowly in the fourth round seemed to slow down a bit. So we'll have to see whether that's going to hold true for round number five now coming up. Joe's left is still causing Cesar Brion terrific trouble. Either by the jab or the hook.
Two minutes to go of round number five. Lewis is unmarked, sees a Breon, bleeding profusely from the nose. All of it from the straight lefts, or the left hook, as Breon tries to get inside. One minute to go of round number five. Half a minute, round number five. Half a minute left. Joe is very accurate with the left. He hasn't been as accurate with his right. There's the bell ending round number five, and the crowd enjoys this bout because of Cesar Brion's willingness to mix. And while he looks like a boy on a man's errand, fighting a 20-pound heavier adversary, he has been putting up a very good scrap. Round number six, due up on tap in this 10-rounder here at the Chicago Stadium between Cesar Brion, the Argentine heavyweight champion, and Joe Lewis, former world heavyweight champion. That's Joe Lewis we see coming out of his corner, Cesar Brion coming on to meet him. Joe Lewis left, Cesar Brion right. Brian's nose bleeding again after having been tended to. Both boys landed very heavily, and that's what the crowd wants to see now. Two minutes in round number six to go. Breon's face is just a mass of blood. Joe is unmarked. But fighting a very clean fight, as you say. One minute to go in the sixth round. I guess that would be the blow that Breon calls his left cross. Leading with the right, not hooking with the left, but crossing with it. You'd be laughed at if you called it that here in the States, but he calls it that. Less than a half a minute to go of the sixth round, and a corking bout between these two.
There's the end of the sixth round, and the crowd likes it because Joe constantly stalks Cesar Brion. Lewis, as usual, imperturbable, looking for that moment when he might be able to land that good right. Brion, a moving target, constantly hampered by the fact that his nose has been badly bashed in by these continuous lefts that Joe is able to find as a landing mark on Brion's face. Although, as I've said once before, he doesn't tag with the right as clearly and sharply as the Joe Lewis of old. I made a moment's mention that this was a very clean fight, and the boys have been gentlemanly about it, although Brion has been guilty of two flailing left hooks below the belt line, for which he was uh, admonished by the referee, Frankie Gilmer. In a moment, round number seven, Pabst Blue Ribbon mighty happy to invite you every Wednesday evening to look in on these Blue Ribbon events. Tonight at the Chicago Stadium, next week, Detroit. Well, Breon evidently feels that Joe has slowed down and is beginning to hit him with ease now. Maybe not crushingly, but with ease just the same. Less than two minutes to go of the seventh round. Breon bleeding again. Joe just tagged him with a left. Joe rocked him with a right to the midsection. Breon's right leg crumpled for a moment. One minute to go of the seventh round. Less than a half a minute to go of the seventh round, and Joe Lewis has hurt Cesar Brion, but isn't able yet to put him away.
minute and a half to go of the eighth round of the ten round here at the Chicago Stadium. Joe Lewis, Cesar Brion. One minute to go of the eighth round, and Lewis is not tiring from punching, but tiring from the effort of being in the round and the ring. And he has slowed down quite considerably. Half a minute to go of the eighth round. There's the end of the eighth round, and as we watch Joe Lewis go back to his corner to be attended to now by Larry Amity, Manny Seaman, and Georgie Nicholson, I'd like to tell you about three comments at ringside. The first for Jim Jennings, who feels that the bloody nose, which has been stabbed so considerably by Joe Lewis, has hampered the uh, brilliance of Cesar Brion and slowed him down a bit so that Joe was able to pummel him about and take uh, a good advantage as far as the fight is concerned. In turning to Al Buck, the New York sports writer said that if Joe Lewis could put two punches together where he is only putting one and let his right hand know what his left hand has done, this fight might have gone to uh, an earlier conclusion. And in speaking to Jimmy Cannon, who has always felt that Joe Lewis was the greatest boxer and the greatest fighter ever extant, he feels tonight that he is probably sending a telegram to that right hand and uh, hasn't unleashed it. These are comments about the ringside, and we pass them on because they come from boxing experts. Round number nine of the 10 rounder. It's an unusual sight for me to see Jim Norris, the International Boxing Club president, with his whole entourage, Harry Marks and Al Weil, and these New York newspaper men out for a fight. But of course, that's because they want to see Joe Lewis and to see whether or not he will continue after the conclusion of this fight to go on further as he desires to. Brian's great flurry there caused the crowd to cheer. This is one round in which he is unmarked. He is not bleeding from the nostril. Hitting on the break caused uh, the referee to again caution Cesar Brian. A minute to go of round number nine, and Brian begins to bleed at the nose again. On, 
Well, up to this point, Breon has taken Joe's Sunday punches. Here he is still on his feet in the ninth round with a half a minute to go. He now has a slow moving target to shoot at, has Breon. There's the end of round number nine, and Breon seems to be getting stronger as Joe Lewis tires. And he may be uh, quite anxious to go punching in the tenth and final round. That we'll have to see. Certainly, Joe Lewis shows that after four or five rounds against these opponents, he begins to slow perceptibly. And that'll cause a lot of editorial comment by the experts tomorrow. Round number 10 on this Pabst Blue Ribbon event series of great Wednesday evenings on television. Perhaps mighty happy to bring you the tenth and final round. Joe Lewis, Cesar Brion, a former champion of the world, a current champion of the Argentine. Well, Joe's mad. He realizes he's got to put the boy away, and he's going for him now with everything he can draw upon in the way of reserve. That is physical reserve. Two minutes to go of the tenth and final round. Joe has Breon bleeding again at the nose. That means he has bled every round. It hasn't been a profusion of blood. It's just been a trickle constantly spatted over the face. Well, Joe took all of Cesar Breon's Sunday punches, too. One minute to go, tenth and final round. Thirty seconds ago, tenth and final round. Brian was forced to hang on. Well, that was a great finish. A wonderful tenth round. And the crowd is up on its feet, roaring its applause. As Joe Lewis congratulates Cesar Breon, and Breon congratulates Joe Lewis. Both boys are mighty weary. Breon taking a great battering, putting up a wonderful exhibition. Joe Lewis, constantly the aggressor, carrying the fight to Cesar Breon, away, but not able to connect, I think it was that Al Buck said, with the two good punches so needed. So now the cards will be collected by Pat Rush, the ring announcer, from Ed Hintz, H-I-N-T-Z, and Ed Klein, the two judges, and Frankie Gilmer, G-I-L-M-E-R, the referee. The cards will be inspected by the members of the State Boxing Commission. 
of which Joe Trina is the chairman, and Ralph Metcalf, that fearless sprint champion of 15 years ago, will inspect, and the announcement will then be made. So we'll wait on the decision for this battle tonight between Joe Lewis and Cesar Brion. And I don't think we'll have too much worry about the outcome as far as the announcement is about to be made. Pat Rush. Judge Ed Klein scores 55 points for Lewis, 45 for Brion. Judge Ed Hintz scores 55 points for Lewis, 45 for Brion. <laughs> Referee Frank Gilmer scores 56 points for Lewis, 44 for Brion. The winner by unanimous decision, Joe Lewis. Well, Joe Lewis did it and the crowd roars. And by the way, if you haven't been one of our regular Wednesday night customers, come on, drop around.